Okay, good afternoon. First, I would like to welcome all of you today here for the presentation of this master's. If you are here in present or online, this means that you have an interest for one of our masters and we are very pleased uh, to know this. I am Angela Chufi and I'm professor of virology and I'm also the director of the School of Biology. And I am here to give you some general information about the four masters that we offer at the School of Biology of the University of Lausanne. My presentation, again, will give you some general information and then I will uh, hand over the words to the different master heads that will present each of the four masters that we're offering. So, what you can see is that the presentation that will be uh, done today will cover these different topics. So, first of all, uh, I will give you this brief introduction on the place of biology uh, at the University of Lausanne. And then I will try to provide you some rationale about why you would like or should be willing to do a master uh, here at the University of Lausanne. And finally, uh, the general structure of our four masters. So the School of Biology is part of the University of Lausanne and of the Faculty of Biology and Medicine. And this is quite unique because in Switzerland, this is the only faculty that have this joint biology and uh, medicine faculty. This provides us with many advantages, allowing really to cover many different fields, from ecology to cell biology to molecular biology, as well as in both living and uh, post-mortem systems. So what are the general objectives and goals uh, of our masters? So what we expect from you to acquire during your master programs. So what we would like you to have is to gain actually uh, broad knowledge to understand life comprehensively under all its forms, from molecules to cells, to tissues, to organisms, and to the different ecosystems. We also would like you to learn about really what is it to do scientific research, what kind of questions, what kind of methods you will have to apply, how you will proceed to carry out your experiments, all these being embedded in different research labs to, do, to really get a grasp of what is it to be a scientist uh, today. And for that, you will really be at the front end of knowledge, which means that you will be really in the labs doing research that we're doing right now uh, in a time-dependent fashion. So being uh, incorporated in these different research labs, obviously you will develop also uh, some, soft, some, sorry, some social skills, okay, as you will have to learn to communicate in French, but also in English with your team colleagues, and also you know, learn about different social uh, skills social cultures, different cultures, and really trying to develop how to collaborate and uh, communicate to your colleagues. So in that sense, uh, you really have uh, soft skills. This is how we used to uh, call them. You will also uh, have, and we hope that you will develop all these analytical and critical skills that will allow you to really um, learn, analyze your data, and share your data uh, with your colleagues. So again, if you are here today, right, is that you may be thinking about doing such a master here at the University of Lausanne. So to know if yes or no you, you, know, you, you would like to do a master or if it's useful for you, you will have to think about uh, a few questions and answer to those few questions. So first, so if you are passionate about a specific area of research, and that we have here this uh, topic in particular, then you know, being here at the University of Lausanne uh, may be uh, a good way to start. If you are curious about the unknown and you want to explore you know, a specific topic, then again, doing a career in science is uh, the right thing to do. If you want to develop or learn new techniques, 
that are uh, at the frontiers of research, that are state-of-the-art techniques, again, it's a good, uh, it's a good place to be. You will also uh, need to acquire, as we said, transferable skills, communication skills, uh, teamworking skills, and uh, integrate into multicultural and internationally recognized research teams. So really, if this is what you want, and obviously if you have or will acquire soon a Bachelor of Science in Biology or equivalent, then you uh, are ready and we may have a master that is, that is being able to suit uh, your, your wishes. So we currently offer four different master programs and perhaps you want to specialize in one of them. We have the Behavior, Evolution and Conservation, the Beck Master Program, the Medical Biology Master Program, the Molecular Life Sciences Master Program, and for the first time this year, we also have a Master in Human Taphonomy. So within these different master programs, you will have the opportunity to meet with, you know, a large number of, uh, of teachers and professors and discover a, a wide variety of hosting, lab hosting labs that uh, you may want to join for doing a master project. Indeed, as you can see, our faculty contains more than 10 different departments with different topics uh, of research in different fields. And uh, those are all research topics that are related to fundamental uh, biology but you may also want to have more clinical or more applied research projects. And then there are a lot of different labs also close to the Shuv Hospital. And finally, you may also want to do a master research project outside uh, of the university. So all this is being possible while you're doing a master program uh, here. So we have those four different masters, right? They will all have a different organization and we'll see that in a moment, but they have different themes, different th topics, but they all have a similar modular structure. As you can see here, they all have a module one, which contains theoretical courses, which are usually mandatory. They all contain a module two, in which you will have a first uh, research project that is called the first step. It's kind of an initiation project and uh, in which you will already have a practical work within a research lab or having like uh, different projects, like a week's pro two weeks project uh, for the human uh, taphonomy master. You have a third module that again contains theoretical courses that may be depending on the master, either mandatory or optional. And finally, you have a longer practical lab research project, which is the real uh, master research project. So, the organization of these different modules within each master is a little bit different. So you have here the four different masters, and uh, as you can see, those modules are being organized differently according to the different master. The medical biology master is uh, done on three semesters and contains a total of 90 credits uh, still this year. And the other three uh, master program contains 120 credits and will last for over four semesters. So they all have, as you can see, usually the mandatory classes or the module one in the first semester. And then they are being organized a little bit differently, but they all contains globally writing classes, research projects, and uh, practical work. This, uh, the philosophy of the master program is a little bit different than for your bachelor project. In this uh, sense, what I mean by that is that you will have more engaging classes, so you will have to interact more, participate more. Uh, so it's usually a little bit less ex cathedra or frontal uh, lessons and more uh, interactive uh, uh, courses. So, why should you do a master? I don't know if you already, already have thought about what will be your career path, but what are the different career opportunities you may have if you do have a master? So you can choose, if you're having a master then, to pursue with a PhD, with a thesis, so doing the academic career. You can decide to continue to, get, to become a teacher, to have additional um, postgraduate diploma, 
or to directly go and uh, get a job as a graduated employee. To give you an idea of what our master research students usually do, uh, you may have uh, an idea with this graph over here, where you can see the different years of graduation of student. So if you look at the master that graduated last, last year, right here, what you can see is that about 40% decided to continue with an academic career, doing either a PhD or get an additional diploma. About one third decided to go directly to get a job as a graduated employee. And another third is either uh, performing internship, the military services, or other forms of training. However, what you can see, is, see here is that going back in time, basically all graduates are, getting, uh, are being employed, and this regardless of the master that you decided to choose. So there is no difference if you're doing the BEC, the MLS, or uh, the other two uh, different uh, master programs. So where are they going after they graduated? What you can see here is that about three quarters of our graduates decided to stay in Switzerland, most of them in the French part of Switzerland, in the German or in the Italian part, and about 15% decided to go abroad uh, once they got their master. And regardless of where they're going, what you can see is that English and French are the two main languages that our students use at their workplace. So uh, let's have a little bit more about uh, practical information. So if you decide to join one of our masters, what is being really important is that if you want to do the master in the medical biology, in the BEC or in the MLS master program, then uh, you can, with a bachelor, you, you, you Sorry. With a bachelor, you can just uh, get in each of these masters without any further conditions. If you want to do uh, the, the master in human taphonomy and that you have a bachelor degree in biology, human medicine, forensic science, or equivalent, then you can uh, get admitted. Okay, but with conditions, you may will, uh, you may need. Actually, you will need. Uh, some experience in taphonomy, and the head of the master will explain this in more details in a moment. And uh, finally, if you hold another degree or academic title from uh, um, uh, abroad, then your application will be evaluated and admission with or without further conditions will depend on the admission office. So, you will be able to find additional practical information on our website, but um, the one important date that you will have to remember whatever uh, master you decided to, to get in, at least at the University of Hazan, is to look at this date, April 30th, which is the final date in which you must apply to the admissions office. So again, you can find more information on our website, which is of the School of Biology, and uh, on the master's uh, uh, page. Okay, finally, this is my last slide. So um, I would like just to remind you that the University of Lausanne provides also additional services. For example, the Career Center resource uh, organize events workshops that can facilitate networking and also provides different advice for job application. They can check your CV, they can help you uh, exercise, train for job hunting and so on. They have also uh, created a Moodle page in which they have uh, published advices, tutorials, examples of career paths and also different useful links that may help you uh, for your career. Finally, uh, there is a Unistage uni website in which you may find uh, different in internship offers that you may want to be, uh, that you may be interested in. And finally, there is also the alumni network uh, that is accessible as soon as you obtain a UNIL degree. So as soon as you will get your bachelor or a master, you will be part of this uh, alumni networks and this can always um, facilitates your job research, for instance, uh, as they organize events and publishes also uh, different job offers. 
And anyway, more information uh, can be found on our website uh, that you probably all know uh, already. With that, uh, I think we can get on and move forward. Unless you have any burning questions, we can also discuss in the end. But are there any questions right now? Everything clear? All ready to come and do your master? Okay. So now we will have the presentation of the Master of Science in Molecular Life Sciences. Well, the head is, is Professor Richard Burton, but he will not be able to uh, join us today. But we have the pleasure to welcome Sven Bergman that will uh, present the master. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? A very warm welcome. It's really nice to see you all here. And I understand we're streaming also. So into the world. Uh, I am replacing Richard, who is the head of the MLS. Um, I'm responsible for the bioinformatics track, so I was one of the obvious candidates to replace him. He's on a conference uh, that he wouldn't, didn't want to miss. And so uh, it's the first time I present this. And uh, if anything is unclear, um, you have the opportunity also to contact him afterwards, or I can clarify uh, things if I can. I think also we have uh, Yolanda. Is she here already? No, she will come later to answer questions because I have to head off, up uh, to the shoe right after my presentation. Okay, maybe before I get started, I'm just curious, uh, who already did the bachelor at UNIL? Hands up. Okay, so that's some of you, but certain... Does doing it right now count? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Counts. <laughs> Good question. Okay, so I don't know, half of you, but there are certainly some new people. All right, so here we go. So he, Richard put this slide on life as a master student, and he's a Drosophila scientist, and I thought very hard what he wants to express with this slide. And I do know a little bit about the life cycle of the Drosophila, and as you, as you can probably see, the white background, these are the, is the last stage, is a young and adult fly. Um, and I, I assume what he intended to say is, in your scientific development, in the master, you kind of have gone through the baby steps, maybe school education, your undergrad study and all this, and now you're really becoming a real scientist. And um, so that's basically what, for me at least, this image said. And, and it comes with lex, less ex-cathedra ex teaching, like the frontal lectures were probably much of what you did in your undergrads. Um, definitely much, it still exists, but it's much less. Um, and you will design and perform some original research. It's really to kind of, that is now not just studying what other people did, but you're gonna do science yourself. Um, it involves a lot of literature analysis, which is part of the scientific work, uh, scientific writing, which is an essential skill. No scientist has ever made a career without being able to write papers, uh, I believe, and also oral presentations. So being able to talk to many people, like I'm you, without being too excited is, is a skill that you really need. Um, and then, of course, that's maybe something you already have skills in, but it's even more important now to be well organized, to know how to prioritize, and as already was mentioned, to work in a team, because science today is almost always really teamwork. So the, this master in molecular life science um, has kind of three components. One are the courses across various subjects. Um, then there is kind of hands-on work, both in the lab, pipetting, something I've only done for two weeks in my life, um, or, and that's of course very biased, very interestingly, to uh, do computational work, writing programs, analyzing data. Uh, and then there is a certain amount of writing involved, also for um, both the, the projects, the first step and, and, and the master, and being able to present it. Right, so what are the molecular life signs? What is actually meant? What the, the, the molecule is, of course, um, the key word here, I believe. Um, so if you think about the biology kind of across different levels, um, 
one thing of one way of conceptualizing is, is I guess, to kind of start from the very fundamental building blocks, even above biology, physics, atoms, and things like this, and then go to chemistry, which is kind of the foundation of understanding the biological molecules. Um, you know, DNA, proteins, RNA, many others, small molecules, and so on. And they then form cells which organize into tissues, make organs, and, you know, come up to body systems, entire organisms. Organisms can form populations, um, different populations, entire communities, all the way up to an entire, entire ecosystem, and if you like, our planet as a whole. So along this gradient of complexity, if you want, uh, you have various levels, and the molecular life science, at least in my understanding, is always having the very foundation um, within its view. So the, the, the molecules are there. That doesn't mean that we cannot talk about cells or organisms and so on, but it is from the molecular perspective. How do variations in your DNA, for example, that's a question I care about, give rise to different phenotypes? You would probably not just want to compare phenotypes, but be interested in the molecular underpinnings. So I think one thing which is important is that this can, the studies often involve model systems. Here are a few. Um, and that means that, in particular in the molecular life science, but I, I know less about the others, it's kind of important that you have a system which you can you know, study in a very controlled fashion. And obviously in model organisms we have great tools to do this, and they will most likely be relevant for you know, the research you, you can do within the MLS uh, master. Now it also comprehends both basic research, and that can be across various topics like genetics and genomics, development, evolution, neuroscience, plant biology, microbiology, as well as um, an exposure to more applied aspects of research, um, like biotechnology, synthetic biology. So all these are potentially topics of research within the MLS master. Um, so here is a little bit of geography. You were supposed to be here, but, um, well, yes, we are in the Amphipole at the moment. I think the meeting was uh, there, uh, was moved, so we are in the Amphipole. And so now where are the places where you could potentially um, be hosted for one of the projects of, of the MLS? So I start with the uh, Genopod. It's kind of over there, I believe, opposite the field. Um, in the Genopod are two departments, the CIG, Center for Integrative Genomics, and my department of um, computational biology. Then um, the other building, more like this direction, is a Biofor. It hosts the DMF, the Department of Fundamental Microbiology, the DBMV, Department of Plant Molecular Biology, and the DE, the Department of Ecology and Evolution. And uh, researchers at these departments um, offer projects within the MLS. Uh, finally, off campus, there is the IMUL, Institute for Microbiology, the DNF, Department of Fundamental Neuroscience, and others that also potentially have been associated with the MLS Master and um, offer projects. Now, how does the MLS start? Well, actually, it's very nice. Richard organizes a retreat, usually in the Alps, I believe. And um, that is an ideal starting point to get to know each other, to learn more about the de departmental research topics. Usually there's a representative from each department. And I think this can already lead to the selection of, or at least overview of the optional courses and the review topics. And most importantly, you get to know your peers with whom you're gonna study, and also some of those who have already done a master so you can exchange and, and learn from their experiences. The common courses within the MLS is the data analysis and statistics. That's actually a course given um, by myself and um, assistants uh, from my group. Um, that's a relatively theoretical course, but it is teaching you an important pre prerequisite for almost all the analysis you're going to do. And, and I guess some of you have at least studied 
uh, in the undergrads here will have a good foundation, but it's just you know, extending a little bit the standard notions of like linear regression and, and basic types of analysis. Then there is a sequence, a genome, SAGE, um, in the first semester, um, where the idea is really to sequence and assemble a new genome, usually from a bacteria, and to annotate it. Um, and, the, and the third um, of the common courses is the write a review and write a fellowship course. Um, and they take usually place in relatively small groups with a tutor. Um, and then, um, yeah, in the fellowship, you kind of write, write a, a grant application, and that's in the third semester. Uh, these tutorials are teaching you how to do literature search, how to do scientific writing, how to prepare a figure, and also, importantly, how to give oral presentation. Um, so a little bit more about this Sequence a Genome project. Um, so um, at least in the last years, I think the um, bacteria, there was, a, from a, a bee, the usual bumblebee, um, an extraction of the gut microbiota, and then kind of a uh, extraction of one particular um, bacterium and then uh, sequencing it. And in the past, these kind of projects have even led to publications. Um, often this might be something completely new, and uh, I think if it's kind of um, really relevant, um, you could jointly write a paper about it. Then um, a little bit more about the writer review and writer fellowship course. So the, these are meant to give you the skills of literature analysis, writing, and argumentation. And um, they are within a personally supervised framework. And also here, in the past, if there was a very good work of review, it has occasionally led to a publication. There is a large variety of optional courses across many, many different topics which are listed here. And um, some of these courses are also overlapping with, with other masters. So it's not that these masters are completely disjoint, but some of the optional courses are shared. So the research that you do during your master includes um, two projects. The first step project is in one labor laboratory in semester two. And the master project goes over two semesters, three and four. And that can be either uh, in academia, so somewhere at this university usually, um, but also in industry uh, and even potentially abroad. And the assessment of these um, research is done through your practic practical work, usually assessed by, the, by your supervisors, uh, by an oral presentation and also a written report. We have specializations in the MLS, um, two of them. One is in microbiology, that's um, headed by Yolanda Shirley from the DMF, and the other one is in bioinformatics slash computational biology, and uh, I'm the responsible for this track. These specializations simply mean that some of your courses have to be within the kind of framework of topics. For example, if you do go for bioinformatics, you would take courses in advanced data analysis, in programming, population genetics, biomedicine, phylogenetics, um, and, and then also work on a project which, well, from the first, first step you could still take from any field, but definitely in the master we ask you to take a project um, that has a certain, um, I would say, contribution or, or setting within fields of bioinformatics or computational biology and usually hosted in a group that has this as a core expertise. Um, that would certainly involve writing some code, analyzing some data, and there's a couple of projects that are mentioned here. Uh, similarly, the courses for the microbiology um, involve microbial genetics, immunology, virus-host interactions, epidemiology, microbiomes, and you can also get ECTs from other optional courses that are non-microbiology uh, courses. Um, in this case, again, the first step project doesn't have to be in microbiology, but could be from everywhere, but your master project should then be um, set in microbiology and again, I list some of the early examples of how these uh, projects, what, what names you could imagine. So the timetable that you saw before of the MLS, now that we are doing this over four semesters, looks like this. Um, as was mentioned, there, there are these four modules. Uh, module one um, is right at the beginning, 
and uh, includes our data analysis course and then the sequence, a genome first part and the writer review. Um, then you have uh, the rest of the semester, many the option of, of taking um, various optional courses. And towards of the end of the semester, um, sorry, you, you can see there is the second part of the sequence of genome. Then in the second semester, we have our first step project. So that is a whole semester dedicated to it. Um, and you know, it, it probably really takes most of your time, but you can, of course, also continue some of the optional courses in the second semester. Then at the beginning of the third semester, you have the Wright Fellowship course. Um, and then the rest of the third and the fourth semester is mostly developed, uh, devoted to your master project, which you do in, in one of the uh, research groups, um, and a portion of your time to complete um, some of the optional courses. Uh, you see the most of the... That's my timer, I have to write, uh, wrap up. Um, so the, uh, most of the courses, I think it should be in the, in definitely in the first year, ideally even the first semester, but then you still have time also to engage in courses throughout your master. Um, yeah, beyond um, the MLS, various possibilities, as was mentioned, academic research, um, applied biomedical research, pharma, uh, environmental technologies, um, you could go into education, and also I've heard a lot of people that are actually in the publishing and communication business. Um, so with this, I wrap up. Here is a, the email of, again, the head of the MLS, Richard. Write it down if you have any questions, um, things that I haven't been clear about. He will be the best person to answer them. That's the link to the website. And um, yeah, with this, I close my presentation. Thank you for your attention. I have some nice, nice pictures, so I dim the light. Um, so, hello everyone. For those who don't know me, um, I'm Tad Kavetsky. I'm the um, director of this master program in behavior evolution and conservation. Um, and this program is for you if you're interested in understanding how organisms interact with their environment and with one another. How does evolution ecology shape, how do ecology and evolution shape biodiversity? How do you explain animal and human behavior? And what does it all mean for, means for conservation? And also how modern quantitative methods and so-called big data, which are more and more, um, contribute to answering these questions. So it's a master program in four flavors, uh, the plain flavor on top, and three specializations. So you can either choose the general master or one of those specializations. And I'll first talk about generalities, and then I'll um, talk about things which are specific to specializations. Um, as Sven has already mentioned, there's quite a bit of overlaps between some courses of the masters and some projects um, can be done for this master or for that master. But there are some basic differences in their structure, um, uh, namely in the back master, the first step project takes place in the first semester in the autumn and the, um, the master project um, can be done depending on the nature of the project and um, your planning schedule can be spread over three, sem three remaining semesters or can be you know, allocated as more flexibility for this. The re major reason for this difference is that we offer um, quite a few projects that involve field work and that depends on the, on the season, typically spring or summer. So starting the master project in September would not allow for this possibility. Um, 
So in this first semester, uh, you have to collect 15 credits in um, courses, and all these courses are actually compulsory, so the first semester is structured. Um, we have two basic courses, uh, kind of catch-up courses in ecology and evolution, the conceptual basis, um, and then courses that teach you skills that will be useful during the rest of the master's studies, scientific writing, data analysis, which is the same course as taught by Sven as in MLS, and molecular methods in ecology and evolution, or for the specialization, some specialization courses. Um, now the courses that you can take during uh, the remaining three semesters are variable and um, most of them are optional, so you have a lot of choice. There's, um, there are some courses that cover certain specific topics, subjects, concepts, like let's say coevolution, um, animal communication, population genetics, parasitism. There are courses that teach you specific um, tools, like analytical tools, um, listed here. Um, and then there are courses that are sort of directed towards applying these concepts and tools to um, conservation and, and, and dealing with specific issues of um, specific issues related to conservation. For example, uh, biological invasion, but also some other applied aspects, like for example, plant and animal domestication, evolutionary genetic consequences and, and or basis of plant and animal domestication. Um, some courses directed to specific um, groups of, of organisms. And finally, a course which we sort of developed to, to, to take advantage of the existence of the alpine environment, which is actually quite, um, you know, our specialty here having this environment. So we have a course with, that includes um, field component, a field course component uh, on mount functioning of mountain ecosystems, and a couple of other field courses, Mediterranean um, uh, ecology, evolution, Mediterranean flora, and um, drivers of integrate diversity in, in the mountains. Um, so now coming back to those specializations, we have three of them. Um, the first is the B specialization, um, behavioral evolution and economics. And this specialization um, is done jointly with the Faculty of Economics. Um, and and uh, the two main reasons why we have this specialization is quite unique in the world, I think. Uh, one is that economics, uh, it, concepts from economics are applied to ecology and evolution that are important and things like game theory um, they are, um, they've been invented in economics, but they have a lot of applications in, in, in evolutionary um, ecology uh, because, in, in a way, um, plants and animals make economic decisions. Now, we are animals, we evolved, and our brain has evolved, and in making decisions, and economics, you know, in the last, ten, took them a long time, but in the last 10, 20 years, they realized actually that the, the way we make decisions is not you know, homo economicus, but it's homo sapiens, which doesn't necessarily mean very smart. And the way we think and the way we make um, economical decisions is, um, has been shaped by our evolution in the past. The second reason is that obviously conservation is not just about ecology and knowing the biology, but it also has an important economical aspect. So, so there is, there's, you know, if you want to effectively protect biodiversity, economics has to be taken into account. So that BASET program offers you opportunity to, to learn something about this. So here are some of the elements that are involved in that, <clears throat> like uh, um, specific courses for this specialization, some of them compulsory, like microeconomics, environmental economics, evolution of cooperation um, in the context of human and animal cooperation and also learning and culture, and optional ones, uh, for example, um, decision-making or <laughs> developmental economics. Um, the other interdisciplinary specialization 
is the G specialization, geoscience, ecology, and environment, and that one is together with the geoscience faculty of JSU. So. Um, so that specialization links biology to the abiotic environment, um, and not, not, not happily um, things like, let's say, soil science and, and, and hydrology um, and, 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 and so, mo so on, and mountain ecosystem ecology. Um, and this specialization has, and again, has several specialized obligatory courses to get the specialization on your diploma, like special analysis and GIS or or one of these three courses in soil and water chemistry or environmental time series analysis or in remote sensing, and a bunch of op optional courses that um, also address <coughs> these, uh, these links between the organisms and their um, physical environment. Um, finally, the computational ecology and evolution specialization, the C. Um, it's um, the specialization uh, introduces you to the fact that um, well, ecology and evolution and biology from the beginning were quite strongly quantitative and have become really compute, much of them have become really computational in recent years. Um, so these, this specialization it would introduce you to various applications of computational and big data uh, and modeling methods to addressing ecological evolution and biodiversity conservation questions. So <clears throat> that obviously involves getting uh, familiar uh, or mastering um, uh, various ways of using um, um, IT tools from sort of basic programming through using specific um, specific tools, um, basics of bioinformatics, basics of population dynamics, and uh, then depending on your <coughs> interest, you can choose additional courses for different approaches, different methods, let's say like machine learning or microbiome analysis, depending what interests you. Um, so, right, that's, um, you can do a, you, you can learn how to use, let's say, satellite data or, or, uh, or do mathematical modeling or use artificial intelligence. So, but well, this actually already repeats a little bit what has been said. Now, <clears throat> as the MLS master, the big master is strongly research oriented. So, uh, <clears throat> there's a first step. And then there's the master project. So research actually takes half of the um, of the, your time in the master, and actually even more because then you also write a review as a part of your um, preparation for the master project. So that's what really is important. And um, there's a diversity of projects that are offered within that master program from field-based projects, through lab experiment-based projects, through <coughs> bioinformatics-based projects, or projects that are based on, let's say, citizen science data, uh, species distribution data, um, and, and, and so on. Um, so here are some of the examples uh, of the different methods. Quite often, these methods are combined within, within a um, um, a project like, for example, behavioral tracking of um, animals or, or so evolution experiments, plant breeding, um, fish breeding, sequencing, um, and so on. So, so you, in this process, you're going to, to ap apply uh, diverse methods, <coughs> and both experimental and computational and uh, observational. And also, um, if you choose this master, then you don't want to be limited to doing a master project on, on mice, Arabidopsis, or Drosophila, but you could still, we certainly offer projects on Drosophila, but you could also work on diversity of other organisms. In fact, 
there were master projects on all of those species in recent um, in the recent uh, years. So, to summarize the general aims of this of of, of the master project, in addition uh, to to teaching you about more than you already know about biology, ecology, evolution, conservation, is to have you to, to develop, let you develop a number of soft skills, uh, <clears throat> such notably like quantitative skills, statistical, no, no statistical approaches and statistical thinking, something which is very counterintuitive, a lot of population out there doesn't understand, critical thinking, planning your projects, synthesizing information from the literature and from your, exp from your own data, um, presentation writing, and what I call project management, because that's one of the things that happens during your master project, is your project. You have to take it in your hand, and, and whatever job you have afterwards, any interesting job, involves things, unions, we, which we can call projects, and, and how to approach them, um, and how to manage them, and how to present them, and so on. That's an uh, important, useful skills, skill. So here are some data um, um, from the School of Biology concerning the, like the next step of our alumni. Um, so many continue to, towards a PhD. Many go into teaching like directly or they take the, the, the additional education needed for, for high school teaching. Um, um, According to this data, 16% work in private sector, and a lot of this is people working in ecological assessment uh, um, bureaus. Um, quite a few also NGOs, uh, conservation mainly, public administration. <clears throat> I am not sure what the difference between industry and private sector is, but these are the data I have. Anyway, there's many possibilities, and especially these quantitative skills. Um, it, this is something that that we think that you get from this, this master. It, it's something that's really uh, um, in short supply on, on the job market. Uh, that's just from the conservation day, but not the one that took their place this Monday, but from last year where actually, so, so there's an event, some of you maybe participated, uh, where different uh, conservation-related uh, NGOs and, and, and organizations present uh, themselves as potential uh, employ employees, uh, potential employers, sorry. And it was interesting, last year there, there were, I don't know what this year, but last year there were like these four of our alumni there presenting different, um, different uh, NGOs and different companies. And this is what I have. I think there will be time for questions later, right? So thank you. It working? Is it uh, okay? It's working. So welcome everybody, dear students. Uh, I have the pleasure to introduce the master of Science in Human Taphonomy. I am Vincent Varlet. Here you've got my details, and it is a new master designed for you. But first of all, I think that for uh, most of you, you don't know what is taphonomy. It is a new world and a new word. And uh, taphonomy refers to taphos meaning burials and nomos, nomos meaning laws in ancient Greek. Uh, it was uh, created, the term was created uh, by a uh, Russian paleontologist, Ivan Efremov. And it, uh, it is the decomposition, the study of decomposition of organic matter. So to sum up, to give you a really basic example, paleontology, for example, is the dinosaur taphonomy. But we are working on human. So the human taphonomy is the science of human body decomposition from death, so the vital function cessation, to remains discovery. So in human taphonomy, we are going to talk about legal medicine, uh, funeral rights, pandemic uh, management, uh, the uh, migration uh, crisis, 
or and also our origin, where and why we are here and how we can uh, uh, study our roots. So we've got a huge timeline in human taphonomy. We are uh, in archaeology and we've got also some uh, modern uh, challenges. So we are uh, aiming to study really dead things, really, really dead, as you can see, Neolithic graves, uh, middle age graves, but also some more modern things such as uh, the Spanish Civil War or hot topics such as the, the museal repatriation uh, when you've got some uh, spoliation and, and uh, uh, technical problems with the museum. And we've got also modern taphonomy challenges uh, such as CSI, crime scene investigation, on individual graves or mass graves, for example, so really forensic uh, um, knowledge, humanitarian management, as soon as we've got a problem, uh, disaster, anthropic uh, disaster, conflicts, or um, natural disasters, um, environmental uh, funerary, funeral challenges, cemetery pollution, new funerary, funeral rites, so really environmental things, and also topics such as uh, digital identity. What about our digital identity once we are dead? So we have a conceptualized a um, uh, program uh, with three main focuses. The first one is the forensic human taphonomy that means that we would like you to be able to identify and document causes and circumstances of human death. So you will receive a multidisciplinary uh, forensic sciences knowledge based on the analysis of the body and its direct surrounding environment. The second one is the humanitarian human taphonomy. Uh, that means that we are not going to be focused on individual uh, graves or individual death, but a group of individual. Uh, and that means that we have to consider the ethical, the legal, the sociocultural, the geopolitical, and also the historical specificities of each fatality, each death, each disaster, and also according to each country, because from country to another, it will, uh, it will move. And the last focus is on the general human taphonomy, because we have to, to think out of the box. We have to go beyond forensic and humanitarian context. Uh, and this may include uh, anything from traditional archaeology to current and environmental professional challenges, for example, new sepultures, uh, environmental impacts uh, in these domains. So we have uh, designed uh, an architecture of the studies, as you can see. Two years, uh, 120 uh, credits, Four modules aligned, uh, four semesters aligned on the four uh, traditional modules, uh, 30 credits each. And you can see there is a kind of uh, gradient, horizontal one and vertical one. So the horizontal one is from the general human taphonomy to the forensic human taphonomy. And the, uh, the vertical one is the fact that we are going to uh, study human body. And then the body is not going to be really relevant but which with the, the subject of the study will be the environment. So the uh, human body direct environment. And then the third module is uh, about the forensic human body. So the human body, but as a forensic object. And the last uh, module is about the project master. That's a project, sorry. So just to give you a quick overview on, the, on, the, on what are going to be delivered. In the module one, for example, we are going to uh, talk about human anatomy for sure, because in order to know how the human body is going to decompose, we have to know how it is composed. In the topic two, we will um, have some lectures from the specialists of the SHUV, uh, because we have uh, a, more and more technology devices, external devices that we could have on board, on our in and on our body, and we have to know how it is uh, interacting with the, um, with the taphonomy. So the pandemic management, so a lot of current topics. But we are going also to consider the whole topics and how, um, the, what was the place of, the, of death and dead management uh, through the ages, through the civilization, through the religion, through the spiritualities, uh, really old ones, but the really uh, current ones. 
and it will uh, be really useful to understand the topic four, where uh, it is about the humanitarian management. So here we've got specialists from the ICRC who is going to uh, teach you how they uh, manage uh, the uh, finally the dead management in each um, fatalities that they they are, they are subjected to. Topic five is about the writing skills, so you will learn how to write, review a scientific publication, um, a grant project, and also um, legal expertise. Then we will move to the second module, so the human body environment, and now we are not focused on the human body as human, but as organic matter. So that's why we are going to uh, uh, teach you uh, a lot of uh, things about the uh, recycling uh, um, and valorization um, processes, uh, the composting, the, the, the uh, anaerobic digestion, and so on. A lot of uh, environmental microbiology, uh, biomolecular tools, uh, botany, forensic botany also. Then we will move to social sciences, where here we are not focused on the on the on the, the human body is finally an object and we have to know well how to uh, uh, deal with this object when we are considering museal uh, problematics such as repatriation but also really um, social media things i mean uh, such as uh, uh, our uh, facebook account i don't know if you've got one but uh, once you are dead what we are going to do with that identity Topic eight is about the localization sciences. You can see there's a lot of uh, things in common with also the other uh, program. We are going to uh, teach you how the remote sensing technologies can help us to finally identify, localize uh, uh, human bodies. Here you've got uh, the um, um, uh, geosatellite imaging from the Mariupol uh, Russo-Ukrainian conflict and thanks to this technology we are able to uh, finally identify the mass graves so we are talking about real life and real uh, applied a real application of directly the knowledge that we are going to deliver to you. Topic 9 forensic biology we are going to uh, talk about geology, soil chemistry, uh, micro and mi micro and mi macrobiology, um, and we are going to understand how the body is going to interact with this environment and how we can collect the clues. We are going also to offer you uh, in the in this. Uh, um, uh, program, a two weeks field training at Quebec Croivia University, where they are, they've got uh, um, a laboratory, an outdoor facility, where we can uh, finally uh, uh, study right away uh, during two weeks on uh, a human model. So here in the pictures, it's not human, it's just a big uh, model, so don't worry. But we are going, for those who are going to choose this master, we are going to work on real uh, exhumation, real uh, um, analysis, and uh, for example, how to collect uh, entomological specimens to uh, um, work on this, uh, on this uh, topic. If you are interested with the video, I can give you the web link. So in the, in the third module, uh, we are going to learn, you, you are going to, to learn how to communicate also on this topic because it is complex and uh, we would like you to, to be really uh, um, in, con in, in your area of, uh, of, of skills um, to um, communicate you know, on such topic. So media training, website conception, uh, psy um, forensic psychiatry courses also. So how to adapt your language, your body language to your public. So it is really, really important in this, uh, in this uh, area. In the topic 11, cadaver sciences, we are going to offer you a full immersion in the University Center Levgal Medicine, where you are going to receive some lectures in forensic medicine, uh, imaging, odontology, anthropology, genetics, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, forensic sciences. You will have also the opportunity to attend to autopsies, to uh, post-mortem angiographies, um, 
So it is a, a real plus for your, uh, your um, diploma. But before being graduated, you have to also perform your uh, um, personal uh, master project uh, during six uh, months in a, in a lab. So we are going to help you to find a, a good lab for you. But, and there's always a but, uh, it is a specialized program. So you have seen uh, that there's two thirds on lectures and seminars, one third for practical work, demonstration, field work, numerous visits, cemeteries, museum, process plans, a lot of things, uh, teaching by ex international experts from academic and private partners all around the world. And the problem is that there's a limitation. It is a specialized program, so we have uh, 24 places per year. Uh, here you've got the registration dates. So for the uh, non-European student, it's too late. For the European student, you've got the until the end of April uh, to uh, select your uh, master, and this one if you want. C1 English level, uh, because all the lectures are, all the, the, the um, courses are delivered in English. Uh, it is open to Bachelor of Biology, Forensic Sciences, Medicine or Equivalent according to the credit obtained in uh, alternative um, uh, diploma. And we need a proof of six weeks taphonomic experience in the form of a reflective analysis. So what does it mean? Uh, that means that we need uh, to evaluate your psychological compatibility to this program because uh, for sure you are going to see uh, sometimes difficult things. So uh, here you've got uh, uh, examples that could um, lead you to be eligible uh, to this uh, master. Uh, we, it's like a motivation letter if you want, but we need to know how uh, you feel uh, in this context. Uh, for example, uh, just give you a, a possibility. Uh, in the Bachelor of, uh, in, bio in biology, yeah, uh, there, is, there are some optional courses and the course uh, introduction to human anatomy, for example, is real a, a golden pass for this master. And also, you need to have valid travel document because we are all going to go to uh, Canada. So, um, career opportunities. So, as you have seen, there's a, a really a wide uh, and a, a huge diversity of, uh, of lectures and, uh, and uh, knowledge. Uh, and it could uh, lead you to, to work in academic research and teaching, hospitals, funeral cares and forensic environment, museum and cultural sectors also, uh, police, law enforcement agencies, security forces, uh, biomedical and biotechnology sectors, and uh, a lot of, uh, of things uh, based on the, the, um, the, 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 the multidisciplinarity of the, of the topics we are going to talk about. So if you need more information, uh, you've got my details. You've got also the web link to the uh, uh, master page. And uh, uh, if you've got some uh, additional question, I will uh, be at your disposal. Okay, so I bring you back to the living and hope you don't mind. So my name is Sanjeev Luther and I'm immunology professor and uh, co-directing this program in medical biology together with Marie-Christine Braille, who is also here in the audience and ready to answer some of your questions that you may have. So uh, our focus is really on the human being. So that's a major difference to the MLS that is much broader. So we are interested uh, in medical biology. And so if you're fascinated about the functioning of the body or you have family members that are sick so, and you want to help uh, to develop new ways to fight disease, I think that's a master that may interest you. And as all of you know, uh, all of us virtually in our lifetime will get sick at one point. And so it really affects uh, all of us and some are even uh, unlucky to have several different diseases over their lifetime. Um, so our need is really to develop new diagnostic tools, new therapeutic tools, and I think in future it will be also much more on disease prevention. So that's probably coming up more and more in our masters as well. Uh, not just talking about drugs, but really um, 
improving our prevention. And a bit the theme of this master is really to go what we call from, uh, from the bedside, so the patient, the patient material. We have observation from the clinics. We want to investigate those. Uh, and that means we go to the bench. We do experiments on these uh, phenomena and try to come up with molecules, with treatments that may help afterwards again uh, the patient. So that's why it's from bedside to bench and back. So what we're all interested in is really to get at the molecular mechanisms that are the basis of uh, processes in, in health, but uh, obviously also uh, in disease. And so to identify molecular targets that can be useful for a diagnosis, uh, therapy, or also prevention. So as you heard already, we really go from molecules to cells to organs and to organisms and back. And this either in the mouse or in the human. So it's very important that uh, we are at the interface of basic research often on animals uh, and also translational research where we try to get more and more now data for the human and, uh, and see what we can do to improve human health. So we are a faculty that has a lot of expertise really in this field and our competencies really range uh, over many topics, so you have several of them listed here, immunology, cancer, metabolism, obesity, cardiovascular uh, disease, pharmacology, microbiology, neurosciences, and many more. So it involves really departments at the university, but many uh, clinical departments also at the Shuv Hospital. So our studies organized uh, in three semesters, so it's a full master, it doesn't impact anything that we only have three semesters uh, rather than four semesters. You can do a PhD afterwards uh, as you can with the other masters. Uh, the organization is the following. We start out uh, with the first semester that has two modules. So this is actually only compulsory courses in the module one. Uh, and a first step project for the module two. So we want you to go uh, and do experiments right away after a few weeks already. Um, in the second semester, you start with courses again uh, before actually going to the lab and doing a bigger uh, research project. So you have two projects that are part uh, of that program. Uh, what is a bit distinct is that we have in the first semester, all of you are together for the module one. So this is typically 70 to 80 students that join us for this program, uh, covering major topics in health and disease. Uh, and uh, this is also a bit to catch up uh, in the early block to really catch up with some of the topics to put you all uh, to a similar level and then go further and specialize in, in uh, more in some of these topics. The second semester is that you specialize in one of the four biomedical areas that we offer you uh, as a track. So the class will be split into four classes, so typically 15 to 30 students uh, in these classes that allow much more interactive teaching also than at that time. So I start with module one. Uh, with the compulsory courses here, you have a list of topics that are covered, so we are going back a bit to what you may have heard during the bachelor, but I have to say that uh, more than 50% of the students come from outside of the University of Lausanne, so we have to make sure that everybody's on the same page and has really uh, the basics uh, in these topics. These are the first three weeks where we cover cell biology, intracellular signaling, mouse genetics, uh, the basics in immunology, medical bio, uh, microbiology, and uh, a primer in biostatistics. This is followed by a continuous assessment that we already do in mid-October. I also mentioned that to those that come from other universities that may not have had training in these topics. We provide a list of uh, topics where we want you to know the general concepts uh, already arriving here so that you don't get stressed out by uh, the first three weeks when we uh, cover these various topics and test you uh, mid-October. Part of that first block is also the first skill development, how to work in the lab, prepare a poster, a talk, a report, or present an article. And this is really leading the way to the module two that uh, 
where you do a, what we call a first step research project. So it's like a small research project where you get familiar with what is research, um, with uh, bench work and all the different aspects of, uh, of this bench work, but just uh, in much uh, shorter time. So this is obviously new to many of you and may freak out some of you, but some others that are bored by the classroom uh, teaching may actually be very happy uh, doing their own small project. So this is really uh, six weeks of work at the bench, and then you have to write up your work and defend it uh, for, uh, in front of the small commission. Okay, so uh, this first step project can be in uh, one of the hundred labs that we roughly have that offer projects uh, in this context, and they are really uh, distributed over a variety of, um, of departments. These departments are mostly not found here on the main campus, but on some of the other more medically oriented campuses. Uh, you see several of here that are at the Bignon, so next to the Chief Hospital building. Uh, we have the clinical uh, neurobiology in Siri. We have in Ippelange the Infection and Immunity Center. We have the new uh, Agora Center for Cancer Research next to the Shuv, and a uh, few labs also here down here in Dorini uh, that are participating in this master. So you're really then distributed over several of the campuses for uh, this project work. So I come back to module one because at the end of the first semester, you are going to have, uh, if you join, uh, the last two semesters, uh, weeks of the semester, will go much deeper now into various diseases. We want you to have a general understanding really of the major disease classes that we have in humans, like cardiovascular disease, metabolic, neurological diseases, cancer, and then obviously drug development and drug uh, kinetics, etc., in the pharmacology and toxicology courses. So that concludes really the module one and the first semester. And this is followed then in the January session with written and oral exams. Uh, this is also the time when you have to make up your mind what kind of track would you like to follow uh, in the second semester. And so that's for the module three, when you have uh, compulsory as well as optional courses, you have these four tracks, immunology, cancer, neurosciences, pharmacology and toxicology, or metabolism and human health. Uh, the semester actually starts with the common courses and uh, some optional module that they will talk about, and the whole uh, is then also concluded again by oral and written exams. So for uh, the common courses, we have initially the introduction to clinical medicine. As this is a biomedical master, we want you to know a bit the life of a medical doctor, of what kind of worries they have, of how you do clinical uh, medicine. Um, and you have then the option of either uh, following that up with uh, an introduction to clinical research, or you're uh, more interested in more basic or uh, preclinical research, then you may go with the training in animal experimentation. So a few more words on uh, these courses. The introduction to clinical medicine is really that you learn on clinical trials how to deal with human patients. Uh, what are the processes uh, that are needed in order to be able to do uh, clinical trials? You will get in touch with a lot of clinical doctors, but also biologists involved uh, in that uh, type of research. Then for those that want to do the practical port part of this uh, clinical research uh, is the clinical research module. So there you really look much more deeper into how you do a study design, uh, how you get patient consent, how, uh, what are the ethics uh, requirements here in Switzerland in order to actually do such uh, a clinical trial, for example, and what are the legal requirements uh, frameworks in order to do uh, that kind of uh, experiment in human beings. And obviously, all the risk factors involved with such uh, new testing of drugs, for example, so the safety profiles. As part of that, uh, you can obtain this certificate for good clinical practice. And this is an e-learning module that, uh, that is part of that. 
So either you're going for this clinical research module or you're deciding to do this animal course. This is uh, actually done in Geneva at the moment. So for the practical training, so it's uh, half the week is uh, 20 hours of practical training, but you also have before 20 hours of theory that you will learn by with the e-learning uh, platform. So that will allow you to acquire uh, the theoretical and practical skills in order to do animal experimentation. It's actually a federal accreditation uh, that allows you afterwards to do independently animal experimentation in the lab. So this will only be valid then for your main master thesis, but not yet for your first step project. There you need to be accompanied by somebody who has this accreditation. So it's called module one um, of this federal accreditation. And this will be valid lifelong. So I come now to the, the part of the module three where you have to choose between one of the four tracks and indicated here are the heads of the different tracks. So if you're interested in one of them, uh, Marie-Christine Bray is here to uh, consult you on those. Uh, she also is very familiar with the two other one, neuroscience and metabolism. And I'm very familiar with the immunology and cancer if you have questions. And there will be actually several students here uh, from the different tracks that uh, can consult you on these different tracks. So I will very briefly go over them. There will be, uh, at the end of March, uh, a Zoom session with the responsibles of these different tracks, and they will present those uh, so that you have uh, some better understanding of what we offer in the different tracks. So I briefly uh, present them. So the first one is the immunology and cancer track. So as the name says, we're dealing with uh, the immune response to infections or in case of allergies or asthma uh, or in case of autoimmunity and also the whole uh, cancer biology and how uh, immune responses against cancer uh, can be mobilized as well as obviously all kinds of other treatments against uh, cancer. So a lot of disease relevance comes then in really in the spring semester uh, because there's also really a need for new therapies and vaccines. So as in all the four tracks, I think you're learning skills and tools to contribute to medical innovation in the field. Um, these courses for the immunology cancer track cover now advanced concepts in immunology, various immune pathologies will be dealt with, uh, uh, cancer, the basics really uh, of cancer biology, but then also various forms of treatments, drug development, etc. Part of that must is really that, we, that they do a lot of uh, practical training along the way there. So in larger classes on genomics, proteomics, 3D modeling, in vitro cytotoxicity assay, histological analysis, and advanced flow cytometry. So going beyond probably what you have done in, in your bachelor. The second track is the pharmacology and toxicology track. So as the name says, it's about drugs that we may take during our lifetime, going from Ritalin to Viagra, and uh, may also have, obviously, its side effects uh, uh, besides being beneficial. So this track is really going uh, deep into that topic, uh, fundamental principles of pharmacokinetics and genetics, uh, the drug discovery pipeline of how you do that and how you develop it and bring it really uh, into the clinics, uh, system pharmacology, going really into various different uh, systems, neurological, endocrinological, or uh, cardiovascular. Principles of chemotherapy will be touched upon that are needed for cancer and infectious disease treatment, and, but also the effects of uh, toxic compounds in our environment uh, or uh, that uh, side effects by our drugs or by the food that we're eating. As part of that track, you're also having e-learning exercises and case studies that you're going to do and two site visits uh, to, I think, the waste recycling plant, as well as to Novartis, to a big pharma, to see uh, how that works over there. Come now to the third track, the neuroscience track, uh, that is going, uh, trying to understand the brain uh, from the microscopic to the macroscopic uh, levels in health and disease. 
with more and more neurological diseases affecting our population. I think this is a timely topic, and it, this is a really across the lifespan. So uh, a lot of aged people that have obviously problems with neurological aspects. So the four modules of this neuroscience track is brain development, sensory functions, glia biology, synaptic transmission, and how you can modulate that. So in health or disease, uh, neuronal death and repair, and then introduction to psychiatric neuroscience. So really a big spectrum of neurobiology. And there's also a lot of expertise here in Lausanne on that topic. And finally, the newest track that is just started uh, this week, the first time uh, that we reawakened and uh, it's renewed, uh, is the metabolism and human health track. So it starts with information on nutrition, lifestyle, aging, and its impact on human health and disease. Uh, that has a lot to do with metabolism that is affecting really every system in the body, uh, medical biology, uh, the microbiota the host interaction. So think of your gut microbiome that we know is now influencing really many aspects in our human body and uh, have a lot to do with health and disease. So metabolism really imbalances affect are affected in many of the key diseases that we know, whether it's diabetes, obesity, cancer, or cardiac diseases. And obviously then uh, they are going to look at strategies for preventing uh, these diseases or managing once the disease is there. Part of that study is also site visits, case studies, and also some practical work um, in the lab. Okay, so I'm coming now to the module four, which is the master project that all the tracks are doing. Um, so that's seven to eight months at the bench. That can be in one of the many Unil or Schuf laboratories that I've shown you. Um, it should be a different one than the first step project, so a different lab, so that you see really two different projects. And you can also search a lab elsewhere, as you've heard. Uh, we have each year people that go also abroad, if they bring a good argument why that is a good place to do that. So like in the other masters, we develop a lot of research skills, especially during that time of the master project. Your analytical and critical thinking, for example, that you learn project management to get quantitative data out that you can present and uh, all of that obviously in English. Part of the first part of this master project is really the, a grant writing exercise on your master project. So that means you're studying uh, your project well and the literature, the key literature on it before you actually start your experiments and that you come up with a convincing scientific question and approach to address it. So for that, you need some time to write up and to also then defend it in front of a small audience. So we hope that during the six, seven months that you really have time to dive into uh, a cutting edge research project, as you heard, it's really at the time uh, something that in the labs we are currently doing and I hope uh, that you will have a lot of fun with it, that you see uh, that it's also sometimes tricky, but uh, finally uh, that's also be cool to be really at the frontier of what is known and what is unknown. I think it's definitely vital uh, that we invest into it. So our, this master is having also a poster day uh, where you're presenting your work in front uh, to all of your colleagues. That's usually a fun event uh, where you get together again and show what you have done. And we also couple it to a career day the same day too, so that you start thinking about your next step. So our main goals is multiple training, biomedical sciences, acquisition of advanced skills in research, um, an internationally competitive training with many people from outside. So it's usually very international what we do and that we prepare you well for jobs in biomedical sciences. If you want to know more, this is the website where you get uh, quite a lot of information. Uh, meet us after these presentations. Really don't be shy. We are all here in order to consult you and to help you find the right next step. Uh, and some of the masters, current master students are here. Uh, and so please take advantage that they took time to uh, come here and consult you. Okay, thank you very much. And see you later on.
Okay, now you have an overview of uh, what are our different masters, and we have the chance to have actually students that are actually following these different programs that are available for you if you have any more additional or practical questions, and also uh, our master heads that are uh, here also to answer all your questions. Please. <laughs> yes, so we do have MLS master students right here. Then we do have medical biology students right over there. Beck students. Where are your Beck students? <laughs> Okay, so now you can just, you know, the session is officially over and you can just stand up and go to the different master program students to, to ask all your questions. Thank you all. <laughs>